With Tesla aiming for a ramp up in 2024 and 2025 as they look to unleash a slew of products, one thing that would be crucial to their success would be how efficiently they can make their mega chargers work. Tesla plans to ramp up their semi and Cybertruck pretty soon, and for that to happen, you need to have efficient chargers that would meet the charge times indicated on their sites. So we expect Tesla to employ four versions of charging infrastructure for the time being. Firstly, their version 2 chargers. These chargers have 150 kilowatt output, but they've been in use for a while and are the most common chargers out there today. They're at least a decade old. So we, and hopefully Tesla, would like to be phasing them out for faster chargers with higher outputs like their version 3 and 4 chargers. The version 3 chargers have a 250 kilowatt output. Still, going by what Elon has said about them, we could see the maximum output of these chargers bump by 50 kilowatts, giving us a 300 kilowatt output from the version 3 chargers. Although Tesla is yet to release a specific power output, we expect a minimum output of 500 kilowatts so that the long-range Cybertruck can charge at the same rate as the rest of Tesla's vehicle fleet. That leaves our last charger, the Mega Charger, which we expect to have around 2 megawatts of power output. And here's why. Tesla set an expectation of over 1 megawatt at the Tesla Semi event, and realistically, it'd need at least 2 megawatts of output from the Mega Chargers to meet the charge times it has advertised on the Semi. The 1 megawatt goal aligns with early last year's reports that it'd be around 1.5 megawatts. However, the most recent report from PepsiCo to Reuters is that they'll be installing 4,750 kilowatt stalls at both their Modesto and Sacramento locations. They also said that the semi charges from 0 to 80% within 35 to 45 minutes, and that figure only caused some discrepancy. So what does this mean? Could it be that Tesla does not have the required charger to meet its touted reports? What would a 70% charge in 30 minutes take? As we stated, the semi battery is rated at about 900 kilowatt hours or more. The 2170 battery cells supposedly used by the Semi are also used by the long-range Tesla Model 3, which maxes out at a 3C rate when fast charging. 3C means charging at a power input three times the kilowatt-hour rating, so for a 900 kilowatt-hour battery, that's 2.7 megawatts. However, the 3C charge rate is for a 0 to 80 percent charge, not 0 to 70. To account for the difference between 70 and 80, we multiply 2.7 megawatts by 7 eighths, which equals 2.3 megawatts. This is a rough estimate, but it puts the charger requirement for the semi at at least 2 megawatts. A 70% charge on a 900 kilowatt hour battery pack is 630 kilowatt hours. If that power has to be delivered within 30 minutes, doesn't that mean the mega charger only needs to supply 1250 kilowatts? Not exactly. Provided the cells are cooled, the change slope is dictated by how quickly the battery can store energy at the chemical level. If we use a Tesla Model 3 battery as an example and scale the charging power to the semi from 0 to 35% state of charge, the average power output would be around 1600 kilowatts. Then from 35 to 70% state of charge would mean an average output of 1000 kilowatts. The average of 1600 kilowatts and 1000 kilowatts is 1300 kilowatts from 0 to 70 percent, very close to our 1260 kilowatts of average power that would be needed if there was no charge slope. While this looks all nicely tied in a ribbon, as we need to have all the details regarding the battery or charger, we could be wrong on how much power the semi can accept or how much power the mega charger can supply. Firstly, it may be a situation where Tesla starts with a conservative charge rate and increases it over time. The Model 3 Standard Range Plus started with a 100 kilowatt peak rate and was later upgraded to a 170 kilowatt peak rate via a software upgrade. Secondly, if Tesla uses a battery cell with a different chemistry in the Tesla Semi, it may have a different charge slope than other Tesla vehicles. However, this is unlikely because there's usually a compromise where higher charging speeds mean shorter cycle life and reduced energy density, both of which are priorities for the semi. The third way we could be wrong is if we fundamentally misunderstood how the semi battery would charge. Then there's the fact that Tesla says up to 70% charge in 30 minutes. 
There are two versions of the Semi. Maybe only the 300 mile range version with a smaller battery pack will be able to get enough power from the charger to hit the max charge rate. But that'll go against the long range Frito-Lay units that charge up to 80% in 35 to 45 minutes. Finally, it could be that although the base architecture and immersive cooling of the Mega Charger are good for 2 plus megawatts, they're still working out the kinks. And this means the current Mega Chargers are a quick makeshift type that'll be quickly phased out with time, much like the version 1 supercharger that was replaced only 6 months after its unveiling. With all the conflicting information on the Semi and the Mega Chargers, the likeliest power output will be in the range of 1.5 to 2 megawatts with an upper end of 2.3 megawatts, which is a pretty modest value compared to current industry trends. If Tesla's Mega Charger only hits 1.5 megawatts, it'd have less than half the output of the Charin standard, which is expected to deliver 3.75 megawatts when released next year. It should be noted that although Tesla is a member of Charin, Erica Myers, executive director at Charin, confirmed it would not use the 3.75 Charin plug as most people expected. This means the plug at Frito-Lay is what Tesla will be sticking with because mega chargers and semi deliveries have already begun. What of Pepsi's 750 kilowatt charging stalls? What's up with that? It could be that they're referring to the average power per stall as 750 multiplied by the four charging stalls gives a total output of 3 megawatts of power on top, and the mega charger will shift power to whatever stalls in use. For example, if one semi is plugged in, depending on if it can draw from the adjacent stall or all four stalls, it might be able to draw between 1.5 to 3 megawatts. So Pepsi's claim doesn't conflict with our other information. We may just be missing some detail. Let's look at the grid-related implications of mega chargers. To begin, we first have to understand how much power is used by a mega charger. Using a 400,000 square foot building, for example, on average, such a building will use about 1 megawatt of power at a steady state. So if the mega charger uses 2 megawatts of power at peak output, one mega charger would be drawing as much power from the grid as 2,400,000 square feet office buildings. Remember that each mega charger station can charge multiple semis at once. In large distribution hubs for a package delivery company, you're looking at over 500 trucks rotating on and off the mega chargers. The numbers get ridiculous at the city or regional level when hundreds of battery powered semis are on the road. You could expect 500 semis charging simultaneously at peak power. 500 semis at 2 megawatts per semi is 1 gigawatt of power. That's more than what some nuclear power plants produce, so we're talking about some serious impact on the grid from semis, not including passenger vehicles. For a more manageable example, let's look at the Frito-Lay station. It has four stalls, and let's say these four stalls charge six semis a day. That's 24 semis charged daily. If each semi pack is 900 kilowatt hours, that's 21.6 megawatt hours. Remember our one megawatt office building? So daily, that building uses 24 megawatts, but the Frito-Lay charging station with just six semis per day per charging stall would be using as much peak power as a large office building over a day. And that's being conservative. This means mega chargers will need to be built in locations with a robust grid, or Tesla will have to reinforce the grid where they build the mega charger stations. This would be crucial when they start building multiple mega charger stations for large distribution centers or industrial parks. Power at that scale would mean that those stations would need their distribution substations to pull down high voltage power from transmission or sub-transmission lines. The lead time for the equipment to build such substations is around one to two years. Instead of substations, Tesla could use a smaller grid connection and buffer it with mega packs and solar panels. A megapack is a large battery system that can store more than 3 megawatt hours of energy per unit. Megapacks are placed near solar or wind farms to capture intermittent energy or reinforce the grid in place of peaker plants. They store power when not much is drawn by customers and release it when needed. Megapacks could buffer the power demands of V4 superchargers and megapacks in place of a larger grid connection or substation. And that's exactly what Tesla plans to do. Now let's look at the implications of megapacks for Tesla's charging network. 
Tesla has the largest direct current fast charging network in the United States, with 58% of the chargers in the country. The company's chargers almost always work when compared to others. The supercharger network is competitive for Tesla, but the moat may be bigger and deeper when more vehicles requiring larger battery packs like semis, cybertrucks, and vans hit the road. Mega chargers are sure to become essential soon enough, but they require a lot more infrastructure, making them difficult and expensive to build and maintain. Right now, Tesla looks like it's the only company vertically integrated enough to build megawatt charging stations at a scale in hundreds within the next few years. Beyond using mega packs at charging stations, Tesla has an arbitrage opportunity with its mega packs and sophisticated grid management software for the mega packs, which allows them to buy and sell power from and to the grid. The mega pack can draw cheap power from the grid during off peak hours and release that energy back to the grid during peak hours at a higher price. More profits for Tesla and a more stale grid as the mega packs act to buffer the swings that occur between peak and off peak power demand. Thanks for watching. Until next time.